everyone. Today on Craving Food Adventures, we're going to Syria for some delicious Kusa Mahshi. Since February this year, Canada has welcomed over 25,000 Syrian refugees into our great country. They had to flee their war-torn country, leaving their family and loved ones behind. Many of them now call Toronto home and they've had to learn a new language, make new friends. But the one thing they haven't had to learn is how to make their great cuisine. The Depreneur in Toronto, owned by Len Senator, opens its doors each week to these Syrian families who come in to make their great cuisine. They sell these meals out to Torontonians making a little bit of money, but also learning new skills and making new friends. The larger benefit, of course, is for us who get to go into these kitchens, work alongside these incredible women to make their amazing recipes. A couple of weeks ago, I did a workshop at the Depreneur, and I got a chance to learn some amazing recipes straight from the Syrian families. Today, we're going to be making kusa mashi. This is typically a stuffed courgette. I wasn't able to find courgettes, but they also use zucchini as well as squash. Now, the filling is made with meat and rice and spices, and everything is simmered in a beautiful tomato gravy. Kusa Mashi is not only famous in Syria, but also in its surrounding countries. This version is non-vegetarian, but you can also make a vegetarian version. When you pick your zucchinis, make sure to look for zucchinis that are not very long and are also quite straight because we are going to be hollowing out their centers. I'm first going to soak the rice. I'm using Cal Rose rice. Now this is a short grain rice that was highly recommended by the lead cook, Rahaf Al Akbani. She has a lot of experience and this is the kind of rice that they use. Now I've seen some recipes online where they use long grain rice as well. So I suppose it does differ from region. I'm going to soak this rice. This is about a quarter cup of short grain rice. And I'm just going to soak it for at least 15 to 20 minutes. I'm going to wash it, drain it, and keep it aside. In the workshop I attended, I was introduced to this amazing tool called a manakra. Now, this is their version of a zucchini corer. I sent my husband on an expedition to the Arabic store, and he was able to find this. It's basically like a long knife, and it has some ridges on one side. They use this to hollow out the zucchini. At the Arabic store, my husband was really lucky to find a very knowledgeable gentleman who also recommended this other tool. I don't know what it's called, but if you know, please do leave me a note in the comment section below. Now, I like to use a combination of both these tools. I like to first take my zucchini, cut the cap off. Now, don't throw the caps away. We're gonna use them later. And using this tool, I'm actually just going to bore a hole right through the zucchini. Then, using my manakra, I'm going to go in and slowly I'm going to cut away at the center, scraping all of the zucchini flesh out. Now, if you don't have this special tool and you just have the manakra, you can use that as well. You just go right in and keep scraping as you go. If you don't have any of these tools, you can try using a regular zucchini corer or an apple corer. Both of those should work as well. After you've finished hollowing out your zucchini, don't throw any of the insides away. We're going to turn that into a delicious dip later. I'm going to take the caps of the zucchini that I saved and using a vegetable peeler, I'm just going to peel all the way around. Now the idea is that I'm going to take the cap and I'm going to make that a stopper for the zucchini. It's going to be filled with a filling and then using the stopper, I'm going to insert that into the tomato base so that the filling doesn't come out of the zucchini. Now in class, what they did was they took pieces of potato and they tried to cut it really small and they tried to fit it into the zucchini. Now I just found that that wasted a lot of time. So I think using the zucchini cap makes a lot more sense. When you're done at the end, all you have to do is discard the caps. Using the manakra, I'm going to scrape the outsides of the zucchini. Now Rahaf said that it makes a really nice design, but I think it's also done because it does help the zucchini cook a lot faster. In a bowl, I'm going to add a quarter pound of ground beef. If you prefer, you can substitute mutton or even lamb. To this, I'm going to add one teaspoon of garlic, and then I'm going to add one teaspoon of dried mint, and one teaspoon of Arabic allspice. I'm also going to add one teaspoon of Aleppo chilies and salt to taste. 
Now, Aleppo chilies or Aleppo peppers are crushed peppers that come from Syria and the region around it. This is used a lot in Arabic food. I was very lucky to be able to find it at my Middle Eastern store. If you can't find Aleppo pepper or chilies, you can substitute a mixture of paprika and cayenne. Mix everything well together and then add one teaspoon of pomegranate molasses and mix everything together again. I'm also going to add a quarter cup of diced tomatoes and a few tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley. And finally, I'm going to add the rice that's already been drained. Mix everything together and keep it aside. I'm now going to stuff my zucchini. I'm going to add a little bit of the mixture and using my fingers, I'm gonna push right to the bottom. Make sure to keep tapping the end of the zucchini on your countertop. That's gonna remove all of the air bubbles. I'm also gonna use my tool to help me to push the meat as far in as I can go. Now don't fill it all the way to the top. Leave a little bit of space because remember once this cooks, the rice is going to expand. I'm going to take the caps that I reserved of the zucchini and I'm going to plug each one of these zucchinis. I've got two fresh Roma tomatoes and I'm just going to grate this and I'm going to discard the skins. In a bowl, I'm going to add the fresh grated tomato together with 400 ml of crushed canned tomato. Now, I'm not sure why they use canned tomato in this recipe. I don't know if it's because we were feeding a larger crowd or because tomatoes aren't available year round. But if you like, you can substitute fresh tomatoes for the canned instead. I'm also going to add a couple of things that are going to season this tomato paste. I'm going to add some Aleppo pepper, one teaspoon of Aleppo peppers, as well as one teaspoon of mint. This is dried mint. I'm also going to add salt and pepper to taste, and I'm going to top it up with 500 ml of water. This is about two cups, and I'm just going to mix everything together. We're now ready to get cooking. I'm going to line the bottom of my saute pan with some slices of potato. What this is going to do is it's going to create a buffer between the heat and the zucchini. We don't want to risk the zucchini getting too soft and possibly breaking. In class, Rahaf used slices of tomato. You can either use tomato or potato. I prefer to use potato. I find that it's a lot more sturdy and I also like the taste of potato in this dish. I'm going to follow this with the prepared zucchini and then I'm going to pour in this tomato sauce that we prepared earlier. I'm going to bring this to the boil and once it's boiling, I'm going to put a lid on it and I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. Let this cook for 45 minutes to one hour. Kusa Mashi is delicious. It's everything in one bite. You have your vegetable and your protein as well as your rice. Now, typically it's served with a dollop of yogurt, but I like to serve it with the mutta palkusa. And I made this from the insides of the zucchini. And it's a delicious dip. If you want to try this recipe, click here for this recipe, as well as I've got footage of the Newcomer Kitchen, all of the background footage. You can click and watch that as well. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week. And also follow me on all of my social channels. Catch me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and even Snapchat. Until I see you next time, do take care. Bye. I've got two fresh tomato, tomato, tomato.